What is up, everybody? This is Killer K-Rail, and... I am Jill Molshan. Welcome, guys. We are coming to you live from my Inferno Body headquarters. And we have some very fun, important messages to talk to you about today. This is Wild Warrior Nutrition. We don't even have a title for this, but we're going to be doing these um, shows, if you want to call them that, once a month. And today we're going to talk about the best forms of cardio for fat loss. Jill! Kev. Does cardio make you fat? Did you do cardio today? I did. You, know, you watched me. You actually talked through my entire 15 minutes of cardio, which was my warm-up. Okay, well, I didn't know if that was actual cardio. That, or that was, was just not my cardio. No. Did it make you fat? I did not get fat. Did no. you do cardio last week and did it make you fat? It did not make me fat. Did you do cardio 10 years ago and did it make you fat? Okay, now we have to start talking about this because when I was in my 30s, I could do cardio every day and I never got fat. Now that I'm in my 40s, if I default to just cardio and I do not add weight training into it, I will get fat. Really? Absolutely. Well, I have not seen a fat monkey flying around my neighborhood from tree to tree and limb to limb any time in my life. And I've never seen, um, well, honestly, I disagree. Okay. I don't think cardio makes and you And you know what? You might get a little bit of this here today with Kevin and I, where he's going to give certain information from his guy's point of view, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give certain information from my female point of view, but hopefully you guys are going to pick and choose, and you're going to know what is best for your body, and you're going to learn maybe two different sides of the coin. A lot of stuff we agree on, a few of the things we disagree on, too, because I am running on progesterone and estrogen, and he is running on testosterone, and oftentimes those hormones do not have the same formula for what it takes for fat loss. Wow, we're going deep into the science there, talking about hormones and stuff. I think we should save that for another day, okay, let's a do rainy it. day occasion. <laughs> but today, let's get down to the point. Um, let's talk about the best forms of cardio for fat loss. Honestly, folks, is there a best choice? Is there a best form? If you're burning more calories and you consume on a daily basis, you're going to lose weight. If you're doing weight training and your heart rate is up and elevated, guess what you're doing? Jill, burning what are you cows. doing? You're burning cows. But what are you doing, though? You're doing cardio. You're doing cardio. Anything that raises your heart rate from baseline is go can be considered cardio. Yes. Now, this is where a lot of the, uh, the misinformation comes from, right? Because you'll get people who say, I went to the gym and I walked on a treadmill for an hour. And I did that for like six straight weeks and I didn't lose any weight. Okay? That's frustrating. It is you put in, what, five hours a week for six weeks, like 30 hours, and you didn't have any change. Herein lies some of the nitty gritty here, okay? Cardio is anything that raises your heart rate. But for fat loss, what's going to get your body into that fat burning zone is not that low heart rate for an extended period of time like they've taught us over and over and over the years. You need to bust that heart rate up, okay? You need to get into a certain zone that is your fat burning zone, okay? Taking yourself out of your comfort zone, okay? So for people who aren't using a heart rate monitor and haven't had your VO2 max tested, right? It doesn't need to be this scientific. But if you cannot carry on a conversation with the person next to you while you're doing cardio, you're probably in a really good zone for fat loss, right? And you're going to be burning more calories in less amount of time. And I guarantee you're going to get some better results. Now, Kevin asked this interesting question. What is the best form of cardio? In my opinion, the best form of cardio is the cardio you're going to do. And the cardio that's most safest for you. If you have joint issues, for example. Absolutely. Impact is obviously not going to be in your regimen. You're not going to be out running. You're not going to be doing sprints. You're not going to get on the curved treadmill like I did this morning and run six and a half miles at a high intensity because you can't do impact. So that's a good liaison into what is the best cardio machine, Jill. Tell them what the best cardio machine is. I can't. That's you just told them. You just told them. It's a trick question. I ah, told you. I you told all of you. Okay. The, the best, best cardio machine, machine for you. The one you're going to do. Amen to that. The one that is safe for you and the mm -hmm. one you're going to utilize on a regular basis. That is the best cardio machine. It's not the stair climber is the best. The Jacob's ladder is the best. The rowing machine is the best. The escalating stair machine that Jill and I both like. That's not the best. It might be the best for me because I love it and I burn a lot of calories efficiently and I get the results I want. The best cardio machine is the one that resonates best with you. The one that you like, the one that's going to get you motivated to go to the gym and work out, the one that's going to be safe on your joints and your back and your brain function, all that stuff rolled into one. So there's not, there is not a best cardio machine. It's the one that works best for you. Keep that in mind. But there's also a little trick here too. It's just like your body becoming complacent. You wake up in the morning, 
you drink a glass of water, you have a cup of coffee, you eat the same breakfast, right? Your body becomes complacent with certain things. If you go to the gym Monday through Friday and you get on the stair climber and you do that for 45 minutes a day, after a certain amount of time, you're going to get some great results in the beginning, but after a certain amount of time, it's going to be very commonplace for your body and you're going to need to change one of three things, right? This is how you get results when working out. You need to change one of three things, your time, your duration, or your intensity, mm -hmm. right? So changing your time, okay? Today I'm gonna go super hard for 20 minutes. Tomorrow I'm gonna go 45 minutes, right? I've changed my time, right? Your, your time, your intensity, right? High intensity or lower intensity, steady state, okay? I like to use the word contrasting. Well, I like that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're talking about. You're In your modality. Between, you yeah. also have to change your modality. So after six weeks, you're gonna to wanna to get off the elliptical, a very nice, low impact machine, and then do something different, whether it's the bicycle or then doing half bike, half elliptical, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to scrap the elliptical altogether, but once your body knows what you're going into the gym to do, and it's already one step ahead of you and it knows, you're not gonna be getting the same results that you did in the beginning. And that is where people, um, what's that called? Plateau. Plateau, that's where people go into that plateau zone. Universal law of adaptation is what you're talking about, also known as the said principle, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Specific adaptations to impose demands. When you do the same thing over and over again, your body adapts to it. So for those of you that, are, that do believe that cardio makes you fat, you know why cardio, if there's a chance in my mind that if cardio does make you fat, this is why, it's because you adapt. And in the first 30 days of a brand new workout routine, if you're brand new to exercise, you go through what's called the initiation phase. And in that first 30 days, you experience the fastest and the most rapid results. And then you go into a maintenance phase after that. And you may lose like a ton of weight the first 30 to 40 days, and all of a sudden you flatline, you bottom, line, you bottom out, and you hit the plateau that Jill was talking about. And that's when you really have to start thinking about shifting things up and down like this. Do a HIIT workout twice a week instead of steady state. Flip things around, do different machines, do different types of cardio, and everything will start coming back into, into balance again, and you'll start being able to reboost your metabolism, and you're gonna be able to burn more calories once again more efficiently. So, talking about the machines, let's talk about a little bit on how to use said machines. I'm gonna throw a machine at you, Jill. Okay. I'm literally gonna pick it up and throw it at you. Okay. And you're gonna tell me how to use the machine. Okay. okay. I just walked into the gym, I'm brand new. How do I use the elliptical machine? Ooh, the elliptical machine. Well, most of these machines, you would walk past and you'd be like, this thing doesn't work. Oftentimes you have to get the machine moving for the screen to go on, right? Mm. That's like basic 101, that's good, right? That's a good Okay, so you get on the machine and you start moving. Some ellipticals have arms that move with them and some machines have, uh, some ellipticals have just like hands that you just hold onto and you just move your lower body. I am always a fan of using the one with the arms because then you can choose. Do you want to use the arms or do you want to just hold onto the handles? Okay, my favorite cardio workout for an elliptical is to get on the machine, Okay, this is what everybody should do. You get on the machine, you put your music on, right? Don't ever work out without music. Yeah, that's, that's not There's allowed. no mojo. There's no, there's no, that's there's not no mojo you gotta have cardio music. without yeah. <laughs> music. Absolutely none, right? Not allowed. So you get your music on, you get a good jam going, you start to move, and then up the intensity, up the level is usually what it's called in an elliptical machine, up the level to the point of where you can feel the intensity. Before that, you're actually not doing anything. The machine's doing it for you, right? In any of the machines, whether it's a spin bike and you up the intensity, you have to actually start feeling the intensity. Okay, in the beginning of your cardio workout, and this holds true for every cardio, you are doing something called, you're trying to, your CO2 is trying to catch up with your oxygen, right? It's this interesting process in which you probably feel more out of breath in the beginning, the first few minutes of your workout, than you will, let's say, when you're warmed up and you feel like your body's really getting into it. Go. It's called respiratory exchange ratio. Continue. Yes, exactly. Right. So with all cardio workouts, this is going to happen. It, whatever you can do to bust through that fear and that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm dying, my chest is compressing, and this isn't fear is right not for allowed. me. Fear is not allowed on the cardio floor either, by the way. Absolutely. Music is welcome. Fear is not allowed. Sorry. Music. No fear. No fear. Start to move up your level till you feel intensity and let the fear go away. You will, after the first one to five minutes, your oxygen is going to overpower your carbon dioxide, and your body's going to start to get into that cardio phase. Cardiovascular exercise, that's exactly what you're doing, right? Oxygen, cardio. Exactly. Right, okay. Brilliant. Now you're on your elliptical, okay? This is what I do. Every song, I switch the intensity. So, mm, I go arms. I usually use the chorus of a song to go, like, to rip it. 
Ooh, that's, like, I like that. Yeah, like I was listening to like Metallica One came on I think this morning, and when they went into chorus, I was like, <gasps> and I went to rip, and then I kind of came back. Like the it. Hunger Bell Tolls is a good one too. Ooh, I'm just throwing one. some tunes out there for y'all yeah, to like. That's like, great. Look up. Yeah. I'm a little bit more on the pop scene when I darkness in prison and make all that I say absolute horror, and I just start ripping it. Man, that is a long, that is a long crescendo, by the way. And then when you get to the last refrain in a song, it tends to be twice as long as the first refrain. Yes, I know. And you're like, ah! Oh! What is happening here? Yeah. Okay, we're off topic. We're okay, off. elliptical. We got squirrels on our head, sorry. Okay, elliptical. You get into the jam, you see an elliptical. Get it moving. Get the arms moving. Get the legs moving. Find a level that is good for you. Oftentimes, these things are set for an uphill incline, right? You can always take it down because if you're on the uphill, you're working your knees and you're working your quads. People without great joints in their knees, and your feet will fall asleep unless you put that flat. So find a nice machine where you can flatten the grade and then you're going to be pushing through your quads. You're going to be using your hips. You're going to be using your uh, calves. You're going to be using your glutes, right? Think about these great muscles in your lower body. If you think about those muscles, those are going to be the muscles that work. Okay, I'm flipping to you. Kevin, I walk into a gym. I've mm -hmm. never done this before. Everybody says it's like the greatest booty workout. What is this rotating stair climber? I think people call it the gauntlet. I like to call it the escalating stair machine. My friend Dave Nicholas coined it as that years ago. And I've stuck with it ever since because it's kind of like an escalator. Oh, that's one of our favorite ones right there. You know, we, we went through this phase years ago where, where a fellow colleague of ours walked into the gym and we walked past oh, him and we overheard him talking oh. to his client saying, never use a stair climber because it'll make your... A double hockey sticks huge. F no, never do it for more than 20 minutes. Oh, and yeah. oh, of I course. don't think I have ever laughed so hard in my life because <laughs> I don't have a big butt and I like when I'm on the top of my game, Shit. I do it for an hour like three times a week. I would I would like to say that Jill has a world class butt and she's notorious in town for having a world class butt, and guess what she does? A ton of stair climber. Okay. No, the stair climber will not make your butt huge. It will burn calories, it'll shred your legs. And it'll shred your butt as well. Because I know from personal experience, because I love the stair climber too, and I got long legs and I, I trudge my way through it. So the question that you originally asked me is, how do you use said machine, right? Yes, yeah, so you're a okay. beginner, okay? Look at it from a beginner standpoint. You okay. get on it and you're a beginner. What would you do? Okay, first thing you do is you're going to stand on the steps and you're going to make sure that the steps don't start going downward on their own. Because some of the stair climbers, especially the old ones, they'll start to descend when you step on it without the machine even being turned on at all. So be careful of that. Safety first at all times. Board the machine, grab a hold of the handrails, and then step on it safely. Then, evaluate your screen, and you're going to see the word start. It's going to be a red, red button. You're going to pop, and you're going to hit that button. Then you're going to have a couple controls to do. You can have um, the one that controls the speed in which the stair climber... Basically, it's just like there's levels. I think it's 1 to 20 is the average levels on a stair climber. So, I promise you... You hit a three or four in the very beginning and you go for a minute, your legs are going to be on fire. When you first start doing the stair climber, it's like something you've never done before. It is intense, okay? Always start light and low. So start with like literally a three and even keep your hands on those handrails for the first time you use the stair climber. Now, once you get adapted to this machine, I never suggest putting your hands on handrails with any one of these cardio pieces of cardio equipment. Not treadmills, not stair climbers, none of nothing, unless you're using an elliptical. And the reason why Kevin the says that is because you should be using your normal, like your body balance mm -hmm. and your body spatiality to um, to stay to stay centered on those machines. So then, when you like when you go, just to think of how many more calories you burn and how much more neurological load you get to get from a stationary bike to a bike outside, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly on a stationary bike and you're holding on, you're not getting that balance training, you're not getting the core innervation. So taking your hands off the handrail once you're ready for it will help to engage the core and engage more muscles, thus giving you a better workout. Exactly. Okay, so the stair climber really is elementary. You basically have an up down arrow to adjust the speed at which the steps go and that's pretty much it and you have a computer screen usually in front of you which is going to tell you your um, heart rate your metabolic equivalents which might come out as METS METS um, and the level at which it is at obviously from 0 to 20 when you get up toward 20 it's going to be it's going to be ripping it's going to be fast when you first start using stair climber safety first hands on the handrails start it up but do not lean onto the handrails just lightly gingerly touch them to get your balance and as you go along, do about five minutes on the stair climber. And if you feel, you know, if you're feeling randy and you want to get a little bit more high intensity, just always, you can start increasing your intensity. But get your balance first. And when you feel comfortable, take your hands off the handrails, still go slow and get your balance where you're not having your hands on your handrails. Stand up nice and tall, keep your abs nice and tight, and just step on the steps and get your tunes in and listen and get into the zone. 
Um, What's great about this machine too, guys, and this is why I do it a lot in the wintertime, I tend to have to, a lot of work to do and a lot of reading to do while I'm exercising and I need to multitask. The greatest thing about the stair climber, in my opinion, is that unlike a treadmill where you're running and you're bouncing, unlike an elliptical, which you're bouncing and moving with your arms, the stair climber, you're in this fixed position. So you can realistically take your hands up and swipe a page. You can turn a page of a book, whatever you need to do, because you're staying, your head's kind of staying at that same level while your legs are working. And it is a great machine for multitasking. Yes, and I'm gonna add something to what she just said about, about reading books or whatever. I used to be strongly against people that would read on cardio machines and stuff like that. But I've changed my opinion on that 100%, 180 degrees over the past several years. And here's what my, my take on it. If it is going to take you reading a book or, or looking at your, what's it called, the eye thing? Do you read the books on the digital Kindle? books? The Kindle or the whatever the eye, eye book or whatever it's called. If it takes that to get you in the gym, to get you in better shape and to get you to exercise, I'm all for it. Yeah. My only problem, my only concern and my only request to you is this. If you're going to read the book or you're going to flip the pages or you're going to have an actual book in your hand, do not do this. Mm -hmm. Nice and tall, okay? Call, okay? Shoulders back, always have good posture. Don't let me catch you in the gym with bad posture on a cardio machine, or I will come out and take your legs up from under you. I promise you that. Well, maybe I won't do that. But I will get in your face and I'll say, hey, fix your posture. So eventually you want to get your hands off the handrails, use your body at all times on the stair machine. If you're going to read a book, that's fine. Make sure you know what's going on in all your planes and everything like that. Don't fall, it hurts. Don't skin your knees, it hurts. And make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. And then you can just make the controls, just follow the controls. And, and usually with the, with that the thing, stair climber too, you can double step, you can sidestep. Yeah, you can step sideways. You can, you can, I've even done you it in reverse go, too. Yeah, you can go backwards. It's great for like training for downhill hiking, mm -hmm. which my quads are usually not in tune for when the when the summer hits. Yep. Um, so there's so many different ways you can use that. Um, yep. And getting creative with your cardio also keeps you on the cardio piece of equipment longer. Yes, right? absolutely. It keeps it. It keeps so it fun. So let's and interesting. skip treadmills because I think everybody's probably been on a treadmill once, twice, I think so. or five hundred times. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about the rowing machine. Mm. Has become super popular, right? So rowing, um, just like an upper body ergometer would do. What you may find in a row, with a rowing machine is that your heart rate gets up faster, and the reason for that is the muscles that are creating that cardio for you are in your upper body. They're closer to the heart, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sending that kind of sending that shock to the heart, if you will. Um, you don't have to generate it through the legs to go back up to the heart. Okay. Um, however, I'm not saying that rowing is just an upper body workout because it is a massive lower body workout. It as is. Well. It's a great all oh, full body workout. And you know, it's funny because if you read any of these charts and stuff like that, they have out there that, that tells you like what the best cardio burn is like per cardio machine and stuff. Yeah. Treadmills are usually on top, but if you think about it, the action of the rowing machine, it's like, that's a full body engagement, man. I do 20 minutes on it that is. thing, I, and I'm, and I'm usually smoked from like the done at 20 minutes. Yeah. If you, and if you get it going well. So any, any rowing machine, except a water rower, I'm pretty sure does not have, Love no, the water, water rower. rowers the do. The wave is great. But you get on and get your, and set your feet, right? So anything, um, higher up is for shorter people, lower down is for taller yeah. so people. So there's these adjustable little, um, heel braces that are on these flat plane things that you put your feet on and you can pull this little pin out and you can slide them up and down and adjust them so you want to make sure that your foot is in there properly and then there's a strap you have that to goes have across the, strap the top that goes of your across feet of it. otherwise yeah. you're not going to be able to push and get that really and that i don't know pull. right and i don't know all the it's called you the, know, pull, the, catch the pull and the, and the catch I the think. pull and the catch right i'm yeah. not super in tune on what those are because i'm not a rower but i do like to use the rowing machine um then once you grab so you've set your feet up then you grab the handle right and then look up because there's an intensity and it's usually just a lever that you go from 10 to one. One mm -hmm. is the easiest and 10 is the hardest. So I would always say start in the middle and then go up if you need to. Any rowing machine can be super, super easy if you just kind of fluff it. I, it's not yeah. even a word and I'm just using yeah, it. You're just it. fluffing. Flip you're it. on there and you're flipping. And you I like the word like, flippant. Yeah. Flippant I use Oh, I do. I like flippant too. Yeah. Why were you so flippant the other day? Why? Don't be um, flippant on your on your cardio machines. So what you really want to do, and I'm like, I feel like I'm getting in the position to go do a row. <laughs> As you're pulling back, you want to push through your heels at the exact same time. What that's going to do is really add the intensity. You're going to arch your upper back slightly and keep your lower back nice and flat. Okay, you never want to hunch over. Okay, and then you never want to round on the way back. So you do want to stay nice and upright. If you can find a rowing machine that is near a mirror, that's always great because you can check your form. Yeah. Um, if your lower back is 
is getting sore, oftentimes you're not using your lower body enough, so you really wanna make sure to push through your heels, which is why the proper placement of the feet is essential, because um, if you're shorter, you wanna get your feet up. If you're taller, you wanna get your feet down, because you do wanna be able to push through your heels to be able to engage the glutes to get that really great um, catch, pull phase. The pull phase, right? Yeah. Catch, pull, right? So think about that, catch, pull. There's lots of great YouTube videos on how to do a rowing machine correctly, but this is one of those, um, this is one of those pieces that I will always say to people, if you wanna up your cardio, you've just gone and done the elliptical for 30 minutes, go jump on the rowing machine for an additional five minutes. Now you've just added another five minutes, totally different machine to your cardio workout. That actually can follow suit with a lot of different equipments, right? So you're used to doing the elliptical, go jump on the stair climber for five minutes, mm -hmm. right? And then maybe the next time you're gonna cut your elliptical time down and now you're gonna do the stairs for 10 minutes or you're gonna go from the elliptical to the treadmill or you're gonna, you know, so you can, I mean, as long as you're as long as you're enjoying what you're doing and you're getting a good sweat going, um, I'm not gonna tell you there's a perfect time. I would love for everybody to get an hour of cardio a day. However, that's not optimal for a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? They don't have the time, maybe their joints can't handle it, um, they're gonna get too bored, right? So whatever you can do over, I'm gonna say over 20 minutes. I would right? say that's a good, yeah. And if you're gonna be in the twenty, be yeah. If you're gonna be in the twenty minute zone, maybe try and get your intensity up after your five minute warm up, right? If you're in thirty, maybe you can take that intensity down a little bit. Um, if you're gonna be in forty five, maybe you can just do some quick sprints at the end. Um, I never suggest doing your sprints in the beginning of your workouts, right? Really dig deep for what's Finish, left. Use in that you. as a finisher. Then use that as like your Tabatas, finisher. Like for example, are, they're designed for finishing, and in, in high intensity interval training, can be the same way. Yeah. If you do twenty minutes at the end of a workout, that's going to give you an extra boost, and it's going to it's going to boost your metabolism too for like twenty four to forty eight hours after workout. So if you're really trying to to lose some weight in a hurry, that's a killer way to do it. Yeah. And um, I like to do sometimes what I call cardio stew or cardio soup, and that is I will do instead of doing just one machine i'll do like five of them yeah i'll do like start on the treadmill then i'll go to the stair climber then i'll do elliptical then i'll do um the rowing machine and then i'll do this thing called the jacob's ladder which is one of my favorite tools in the whole wide world of cardio um and that's an easy way to not get too bored and then you can literally do like one minute on each and repeat that cycle like five times and you got almost 30 minutes of work done or you can do like five minutes on each 10 minutes on each whatever or you can just do it until you start feeling bored and then jump to the next one until you start feeling bored and jump to the next one so there's so many strategies involved with using machines and cardio machines that it's not even funny. Right. And um, I wanted to say, Jill, what do you think is the best amount of time and, and frequency during the week to get the most benefits out of cardio? And you kind of just answered that question. So. I, you know, so of course, like doing cardio every day is great. It's great for your heart. It's great for your body. You're gonna get, you're gonna get a really good um, sweat on. However, where do you add the strength training into that, right? right. So, so it's my, a balance. my suggestion from a, fem from a female point of view, a f almost 45 year old female point of view, um, I would say three times a week. Three times a week, the focus is your cardio, right? So maybe you're doing cardio in a super, maybe you're doing your core workout in the same day that you do your cardio, right? And then what do you do on those alternating other three days that you're not doing cardio? The focus is your weight training. The cardio is more of your warm up and your cool down, right? So knowing that the bulk of your time is either gonna be spent weight training or the bulk of your time is going to be spent on cardio. So my suggestion is three times a week and switch your focus of what the bulk of your workout is. I think that's fabulous advice right there. Anything else? Um, let's see. Best forms of cardio for fat loss. Check. Best cardio machines. Check. Check. How to use them. Check. Check. And you can always ask us too. How to structure your cardio workouts. Check. check. Right? Shorter amount of time, higher intensity, longer amount of time, maybe steady state. Add in some sprints at the end. Dig deep. Now, something we didn't talk about, Kev. Which is? how to avoid cramping while doing your cardio. Wow. So, um, I just had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is hypothetical. I would love a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. I just <laughs> well, had a I peanut butter and jelly I've sandwich. Had one of those. It's I, been years, I think. Let me make you one. Oh, uh, I I love On some gluten free bread. Yes, you bet. Um, <laughs> is now a good time for me to go use the that 
all those calories I just put in my belly. Oh, it's too. a great time <laughs> if you want a stomach ache and if you want the feeling of an elephant standing in your chest, it's a great time to do it. Exactly. And there's a few reasons why this is a very, very bad idea, okay? And to we are digest... very passionate about this too. And I'm sorry for all you people that like to do the pre-workout feeding, but there's you know, so we are fasting experts why. and um, hello, honestly, you should be fasted going into your cardio workouts. A hundred percent. If, if you're one of why. those people that works out in the morning, I challenge you to go one month by doing your cardio workouts and your strength workouts in a fasted state. Okay. You're not going to die. I guarantee yeah, I it. Promise. If you get, get a little lightheaded, you're probably um, deficient in Eat some salt. electrolytes, right? Into salt, Eat some salt. Gone. But you're going to get a much better calorie burn and fat burn if you do your cardio in a fasted state. I'm not telling you to go outside and do a three hour bike ride in a fasted state. That is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, however, what happens when you do eat before you exercise is all of the blood is going to go to your stomach to start digesting that food. You're not going to have the blood in the places that you need it, which are your legs and your arms. The and major, only the major muscles of your whole entire body. Exactly. And you, it could lead to neural fatigue, right? Your brain could get tired. You could get frustrated, right? Because your brain is sending signals that things aren't working. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do is have your brain sending the wrong signals to your muscles when you go into exercise. Now, let's say you're one of those people who your, your perfect time to work out during the day is 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m. right after work. There's no way you can fast until 4.30 p.m., Right, unless you're doing an extended fast, which we're not asking you to do right now. So what could you do? What is a good amount of time to refrain from eating, Kevin? Four hours is your bare minimum. It takes four hours for the first process of digestion to occur, which goes into peristalsis. And if you give yourself four hours, I think you're gonna be good enough to go as far as cardio is concerned. Now, I've been doing this for many, many years, and Jill's been doing it for many years. And my, I have like a minimum requirement of 12 hours because I work out first thing in the morning. My, my best workouts occur when I'm 12 hours fasted. You, all, you want to like work your way to that, but in the very beginning, if you're just dipping your toe in the water and you've been like experiencing this like heaviness when you're doing your cardio workouts and, and this like uncomfortable feeling in your stomach and like cramping and like labor breathing, chest pain, stomach pain, different things like that, you're probably eating too soon before your workout or too much before your workout. And if you are going to eat before your workout, always keep this rule in mind. The closer it is to your workout, the less you're going to consume and the easier the digestibility of the food should be or the beverage first of all secondly um try to increase the time between your last meal and your workout just like i was saying so if you can start with a four hour window that's a good spot to start and you may go in the four hours and be like wow that was really good i want to try to stretch a little bit more and then just kind of keep going backwards five hours six hours seven eight keep going backwards so what kevin's saying is you eat your lunch at noon do your cardio at four yeah right? try that um and you know it's the, it's this really interesting thing that happens i can go into a workout starving like starving i can't think mm -hmm. of anything more than eating if i can get my butt to the gym i know for a fact that when my workout is over i will not be hungry Okay, and I will usually eat afterwards anyway. I like to have about a one hour window before I eat my first meal, but it takes the hunger away to actually start exercising. Now, if you're one of those people that every now and then you work out and you are like starving during your workout and you are actually like, you've got your workout and you're like 30 minutes into your workout, you're starving, have something to eat, right? We're not telling you to not eat, but listen, I am not a spring chicken. Um, I like to think I'm a spring chicken, but I also am a super high charged mom of two where their schedules boggle my mind. And then I have to add in my schedule, right? What I need to do. And I think a lot of you are like this out there. I need to train smarter and not harder, mm -hmm. right? So one of those things to do is to not be constantly trying to catch up with my calories. I ate this. I got to burn it off. I ate this. I got to burn it off. That mentality is so old. It's, um, it's old school and it doesn't work. It, it just, it, do, it doesn't work. Trust me, this doesn't work. However, doing things smarter versus harder does work. And that means going into your workouts in a fasted state, getting a better calorie burn, getting a better fat burn, and then having your first meal of the day, whether it's protein or it's a salad or it's your regular breakfast, your bacon and eggs, right? Mm -hmm. um, these simple tricks are going to help get you into the shape you wanna be in. And if I can leave you with one final, final thing, ease into it. If you haven't been doing cardio, ease into it. Start with 10 minutes. Applaud yourself. Not, dang it, I wish I could have done more. Yeah. Ugh, that was so hard. I am so out of shape. 
If you stick with it, you won't be out of shape. Start with 10 minutes, okay? 10 minutes for your first week, 15 minutes for your next week, 20 minutes for your next week. Start slow because what, what you're not only will your brain thank you for taking it easy like that, your tendons and your ligaments will thank you and you'll be able to keep up with this for a lifetime because fitness isn't a fad. Fitness is a lifestyle choice. Absolutely. It's all about gradual, small, gradual steps that you can keep building on every single week and doing only what your body allows you to do as you go along. It's dropping the ego and it's doing that which is going to be good for you and you always want to feel better when you leave the gym than when you got there or when you leave your exercise room at home than when you got there as well. So we didn't mention bikes, but bikes are pretty self-explanatory. I just want to mention those because some people don't know how to set the seat up properly. Yeah. And I know you've got a peloton at home. I and do. That's, that seems to be a very popular thing, but exercise bikes come in two forms. You have basically an upright bike, which does not have a backrest on it, and this bike called the recumbent bike, which for any of you that have any kind of hip or back issues or even knee issues, I would say, it has this nice, comfortable seat that you sit in with a backrest on it. So that's a recumbent bike. So if you have back pain or anything like that, and you're trying to get in shape and you're frustrated because you don't know what to do, the recumbent bike is always a safe place to start. And the, the, tri the trick with both is, um, as far as setup is concerned, you want to be able to set it up so your leg, when you extend it fully, is almost fully extended, but there's a slight bend in your knee because that's going to save... The, it's going to save your knee joints when your a foot lot of is damage. Parallel to the floor. So when your what? A, when your foot is parallel to the floor. So mm -hmm. having a slight bend in your knee, but your but your heel is pointed straight down. You want to have your foot flat with the pedal, right? And your and your foot parallel to the floor. Yep. Floor, right? You don't want your toe po toe pointing down or your heel pointing down. You want to be parallel with the floor with a slight bend in your knee. That's perfect. So there's your there's your tutorial for the bike, and then it's just like. You can easily adjust that by hitting the resistance button just like the rest of the machines. They're all kind of based the same way. So anyway, that is our long story about what forms of cardio are the best for you and how to use machines and everything else. This is Killer K-Rail. I'm Jill Mulshan. And if you guys have any questions or comments, we are always here for you. Let us know if you have any questions or comments, if you need any more help or you need any further advice. We represent My Inferno Body, and we are here for Wild Warrior Nutrition. Make sure to get your pine pollen, because I love pine pollen. Get the tincture and get the powder. And also, stay tuned for the beef liver that's about to drop over the next month here at Wild Warrior Nutrition. In the meantime, go out there and do cardio. Do it with a smile on your face. Make sure you have good posture. Music in your you ears. Want. Music in your ears. For the love of God, put music in your ears. <laughs> for the love of God. Make sure to drink water. We didn't mention that, but if you're going into workouts fasted, drink water. That's the main thing you got to do. And put a little salt in there too if you're worried about electrolyte imbalances. But that's only going to happen if you're doing like 90 minutes of high intensity sweating activity. And you, you, know, you got a better chance of getting probably abducted by Martians, I would think, than that happening. I'm sure that's a statistic out there, there somewhere. Probably. Yeah, we have to I'm refer sure to the Ripley's, believe it or not, almanac, which we have in the other room of our studio here. Okay. Till next time. Jill, let's do the flex. Have a great day, everybody.